there's such a, a horrendous level of, of backward looking revisions in this jobs data that I think they're probably going to get to one seven something faster than I would have thought before the number. I mean, these numbers, we're the bear, don't forget, on labor. We have a whole 100-slide deck uh, classifying, qualifying, showing you the rate of change across the entire history of labor. And uh, the head of city group today on the strategy side was on Fox with me, and he, his answer before the number came out was, um, well, that, that I hear you on the, on the cycle work, but this time is different. You literally said that. I repeated that he said that, and he said, I do think it's different this time. And then within three minutes of the jobs number came in, coming out, he, he, I asked him again, and he said, you're right. It's not different this time. So okay, <laughs> like, this is what we've been waiting for. And um, it's not a good day for the country. Obviously, I'm not your president, and you don't want me to be. Um, but And you don't need a speech. You need to be right. And that's the point. We're not always right, but we need to start to position more broadly now for what the Federal Reserve clearly needs to do at the October meeting, uh, which is change their language. And then push out the dots, I believe now, Ben, the, uh, if you could pull it up, I don't, I'm in the car, but I think that's on futures, have to have just eviscerated the December probability of a rate hike and have moved somewhere into 20, um, into 2016. The problem with 2016, if your bond bear calls on that, is of course that it's an election year. And um, the growth data for the fourth quarter, which is the toughest of the year, won't be reported till the first quarter. So again, you know, the odds of a rate hike till the, at least the middle of next year are, are falling precipitously, and there's an election there. So, um, you know, we've known this. Everybody that follows our work knows this. It's just, it's just that moment in time where I'm just going to stop talking and, and take questions because I have nothing else to say. I mean, it's clearly a point of um, – it's a good day for us, but it's not a good day for the market. It's certainly not a good day um, for a lot of people, and I certainly don't want to um, – you know, dance on graves or anything like that. I, I really don't. I, I don't appreciate that we, as a as an industry, have been so bad and so accepting of mediocre forecasting from not only the Federal Reserve but from Wall Street. Um, you know, we're, we started building this firm in a, you know, during the crisis of 2008 by calling that. Uh, again, I'm not trying to tell you, you know, I'm all that because we called that and that and that. But it's the same model. And what I am disappointed in is that Wall Street really hasn't changed at all. That's not different either. And and I think that that's something that. Maybe you're going to need an economic crisis to change because to change politically uh, or to change economically in terms of the leadership on the monetary or fiscal side, you, you in many times have to have a crisis. And that's, that's something to think about after today.